Power system protection is the branch of power engineering that deals with the protection of the power system from faults through isolation of the faulty parts from the remaining network. The objective of the protection scheme is to keep the power system stable by isolating only the components that are under fault while ensuring proper operation of most of the remaining power system. Protection systems mostly comprise of current and potential transformers, relays, circuit breakers, batteries, communication channels. A relay is an electrically operated switch. Many relays use an electromagnet to operate a switching mechanism, but other operating principles are also used. Different relays are used in different protection schemes, but most of the relays have the same logic pattern. Input, measurement, decision making and output. Input is your voltage, current or frequency. Relay measures the input and determine if it is under normal value. Under normal value conditions, the output of a relay is zero. If the system detects a fault, the output of the relay directs the circuit breaker to perform the switching operation. A tripping signal generated in DC volts on the relay is transferred to the circuit breakers. The circuit breaker executes the orders from the relays. A circuit breaker. A circuit breaker is an automatically operated switch designed to protect the circuit from damage caused by overload or short circuit. Its basic function is to detect a fault condition and by interruption it stops electrical flow. Unlike a fuse, a circuit breaker can be reused. That is why circuit breakers are most commonly used in substation or reliable networks. All the high power circuit breakers employ arc quenching methods. Arc occurs whenever two high voltage contacts are interrupted. Arcs are very dangerous and therefore must be removed. Some arc quenching methods include oil, vacuum, air blast, S6 gas. On the basics of these different arc quenching methods, circuit breakers are also classified. Some common substation circuit breakers are dead tank circuit breaker and a life tank circuit breaker. A dead tank circuit breaker is a circuit breaker whose base is grounded, while a circuit breaker which is suspended in air and isolated from in isolated from the ground is a life tank circuit breaker. As the current or voltages in the power system are beyond the measurement capabilities of normal measuring instruments like voltmeter and parameter, the current and potential transformers are employed to step down the quantity for measurement. These transformers step down the current or voltage in a known ratio to allow for proper operation of the measurement devices. Batteries present in protection system provide, in case, provide power in case of disconnection of power from the system. Communication channels allow for remote analysis of voltage and current values and they also allow for remote tripping of equipment. Grounding Grounding is the intentional or accidental connection of some equipment or device to the ground. Grounding is done by digging pits and filling them with salts and charcoal. In summer, water is poured into these pits in order to decrease their resistance. Two types of grounding System grounding A grounding the neutral wire of the system involves actual grounding of a current carrying conductor usually called the neutral of a power distribution system. Equipment grounding in which the whole equipment is connected to the ground or placed at ground potential. The two grounding methods are solid grounding, grounding without any impedance connected between the wire and ground. Impedance grounding, grounding with an impedance intentionally connected between the wire and ground. There are two types of impedance grounding. Resistance grounding where a resistance is connected between the wire and ground. Inductance or capacitance grounding where an inductor or capacitor is connected between the wire and ground. Both solid or impedance grounding schemes have their own importance. Impedance grounding in some cases has certain advantages over solid grounding. Resistance grounding is used for operating voltages that lie between 2.4 213 kilovolt. Most sensitive industrial equipment like motors require resistance grounding to reduce the amount of fault current. Capacitance or inductance grounding is used for grounding of delta connected systems. Resistance grounding minimizes the risk of electric shock and protects sensitive equipment by reducing the amount of fault current. But sometimes in low voltage systems, solid grounding becomes essential when the protection devices like circuit breaker or relays require high currents to operate in that case resistance grounding is not used. In power transmission systems, 
There is a need for solid grounding to protect the power lines from even the slightest fault. The only problem with solid grounding is that in case of fault, a large amount of current will flow through the ground. Uh, line protection Transmission lines are a vital part of the electrical distribution system as they provide the path to transfer power between generation and load. Transmission protection systems are designed to identify the location of faults and isolate only the faulted section. Line protection is based on relays which are broadly classified as protective relays, regulating relays, reclosing and synchronizing relays, auxiliary relays, protective relay, a relay whose function is to detect a fault and initiate appropriate control signal such as a tripping signal, regulating relay, device that manage the operation of load tap changer on a transformer, reclosing and synchronizing relay, a programmable relay whose function is to initiate a sequence of actions that lead to the automatic reclosing of a circuit breaker, auxiliary relay, a relay which assists other relays by applying supplementary actions. Transformer protection. Transformers are an essential part of the power system and are used throughout the power system at different voltage levels. Therefore, transformer protection becomes essential for ensuring reliable power supply. Faults in a transformer. The two types of faults that occur in a transformer are internal faults. Internal faults in a transformer may occur due to insulation breakdown, which creates a short circuit path between the phases and the grounded core. The increased current flow in this case causes severe damage to the windings through faults. Faults on the secondary side would cause a severe current to flow through the primary side of a transformer. Similarly, faults on the primary side would cause a severe current to the secondary side. These faults are labeled as through faults and they result in insulation breakdown, thermal damage, etc. Primary objectives of a transformer protection scheme. The primary objectives of a transformer protection scheme are detection to detect the internal and external faults occurring in a transformer with a high degree of sensitivity. Protection. It should also protect against abnormal operating conditions like overexcitation, over voltage, and overheating. Reliability. It should be able to provide backup protection in case of through faults on the system. Protection types. The different types of protection used for transformers are overcurrent protection, over voltage protection, differential protection, excitation protection. Overcurrent protection for protection of the transformer from phase and ground faults. Fuses are used as primary protection for transformers below 10 MVA, but for high power transformers, circuit breakers are used as primary protection and fuses as secondary protection. Typically, fuses are set to 150% to 200% of the maximum value of magnetizing current in a sh short time load or cold pickup, maximum three phase short circuit current. Differential protection. For a transformer under balanced condition, power in is approximately equal to power out. Differential protection is normally applied to transformers of 10 MVA and above, or depending upon its criticality. The following factors affect the differential current in a transformer and should be considered while applying differential protection. These factors can result in a differential current even under balanced power in and out conditions. These are magnetic inrush current, over excitation, current transformer saturation, different primary and secondary voltage level, phase displacement in a delta Y. Differential relay. To reduce the previously mentioned effect, percentage differential relays with the percentage characteristic in the range of 15 to 60 percent are applied to transformers. Additionally, in modern microprocessor system, numeric relay harmonic restraints can be applied. The second harmonic is the most dominant harmonic in the magnetic inrush current, and the second harmonic restraint is utilized to prevent the relay from operating during the inrush. Harmonics are voltage and current frequencies riding on top of the normal sinusoidal voltage and current waveforms. Usually, these frequencies are in multiple of some fundamental frequency. Variable percentage relays are also used. In this case, the percentage restraint increases as the transformer through current increases. This limit has adverse effect of current transformer saturation. Mechanical fault detection. To detect the mechanical faults that occur in a transformer, the following tests are used. Oil analysis. Gas analysis.